many ways in which the Lord causes our hearts to be purified is through trials. You guys, trials aren't just unavoidable. They are necessary to your spiritual growth. I can't tell you how many times I've heard of somebody walking away from the faith because they came into a church, heard a message about how everything was about being blessed and their dreams coming true and their life being perfected only to encounter trials and think that the word of God was a lie. James chapter 1. I'm going to read verses 2 through 4. James 1, I'm going to read verses 2 through 4. It says this. Dear brothers and sisters... When, not if, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. I have trouble with that, I'll admit it. Because sometimes I'm tempted to consider trials an opportunity to panic. To be in my feelings, to, to allow negativity to have its way in my mind. But here the Bible says, consider it an opportunity. In other words, it's your choice for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect. That word there means mature. You will be mature, spiritually mature, and complete, needing nothing. First Peter chapter 1 Verses 6 through 7 say this. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary. You have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Trials refine your faith like fire refines gold. Now the scripture talks about a day of judgment for believers. Yes, we too will stand before the Lord. And the Bible says it's different for believers because it's not our souls that are being judged, it's our work that's being judged. And the scripture says when a builder builds, that that builder uses various materials. But on that day, when you stand before him, he will judge your work by fire. And whatever is not consumed by fire and remains will count toward your heavenly reward. But how many things, I wonder, will be burned up because of impure motives, because of distracted living, because of taking every opportunity instead of praying about which ones were God? I'm not driven by opportunity. I'm driven by the voice of the Holy Ghost. And some of us have to realize that our works too will be tested. And then the Bible says that you will make it into heaven, but as one who escaped through a wall of fire, just barely, you'll go into heaven smelling like smoke. <laughs> but the work will all be burned up. The truth of the matter. Either the fire of trials in this lifetime will purify your work or you will get to the end of your life and find that there still is a fire that will purify your work. Except on that day, there's no turning back. What you do, who you are, the genuineness of your faith will be tested by fire, whether on this side of eternity or in the next. I say, Lord, send the fire now. <laughs> send the fire now because I want my reward to stand. Fire removes impurities. When watching a refiner purify gold, you'll notice that they heat gold to a very high temperature. And as that fire burns, that gold begins to be purified. Whatever is not truly gold will become smoke. It will be burned away. And only the true and pure gold remains because only the true and pure gold can survive such temperatures. And the refiner will look into the gold and he will know that the work is complete when the gold becomes almost glass-like and he can see his reflection. 
In the same way, God knows that a trial has completed you. And he can look at you and see the image of Jesus. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Also, help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.